Okay, all praise, all praise. I believe, I believe he's coming back. You believe he's coming back? Yeah. Good. Now, when he comes back, what is his, his mission? What is he going to do? Oh, <laughs> that say is right. He's, he's definitely going to change things, but, but not in the conventions, not in the way that you think, right? It's, let me ask you this. When Christ comes back, is he going to grab every nation of people together and give them dolphins, trees, sunshine, and rainbows, and hugs. And... Oh, yeah, yeah, we do. Give me, give me that, and, uh, what you got for me? Yep, my man, you a man after my own heart. Read what you got. Read in nine? Yep. Yep, get that for me. Read. Bring it out! The book of Second Peter, chapter three, and verse nine. Bring it out! The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. The promise is he's going to come back and redeem the children of Israel. The people that you see on this sign, sir. That is Christ's promise. He's not slack concerning that, though, though he suffered long. As some men count slackness, but it is long-suffering towards us, not willing that any shall perish. Giving us a chance to get ourselves right, because our people are bugged out. Our people believe that they are pressing as Jesus. Read. But that all should come but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. So the day of the Lord is going to come, and you're not going to see it when it's coming. Read. In which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. Boom. Boom. Right. You understand that? So when Christ comes back, thermal nuclear destruction is also coming. That's right. That, that doesn't sound like nobody knows. Like, we don't know. We, the Bible says plainly when Christ comes back, much death is going to happen. Right. Read. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Right, read. And the earth also, and the works therein shall be burned up. Uh -huh. Seeing then, seeing then that we know that when Christ is going to come back, thermonuclear destruction is going to eradicate everything that is not godly. It's See, we, we know that. We, we know that, read. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. Uh -huh. What manner of persons are ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Right. So what, what manner of man should you be, sir? Man of man? Yeah. A man of God. A man of God. So what's a man of God? What does a man of God do? He reads. I believe he is. Right. Do you keep the commandments of God? Yeah. What commandments do you keep, sir? What commandments do you keep? Tell me, sir. Matter of fact, I'll do you better. Today's the Sabbath day, right? You keep the Sabbath day? How do you, how do you keep the Sabbath day? Sabbath day? How do you keep it? I keep peace. You keep peace? Yeah. Where's that in the Bible, sir? You don't need the Bible. Give, give me a... Do you work on a Saturday? Oh, okay, I understand. Say with me, bro. Don't, don't, don't say that and walk away. I'm crazy, man. What you got? No, no, that's not what I want. Give me uh, Nehemiah 10:31. So, oh God, perfect. He just walked in the store. He just walked in the store. Read what you got, bro. My man said I keep the Sabbath here in my heart. In peace. Hey, this is seven-day Adventist. You seven-day Adventist? Yeah. Oh boy. So, all praise. So, let me ask you a question. Since you you go to church every Sunday. And you learn about that Saturday. Okay, good, good. That's accurate. To a degree. All right, so what do they teach you about the Sabbath? Like, how are you to keep the Sabbath? Keep the Sabbath holy. How? By giving it, um, let it, it's a day of rest. Okay, true, true. Yeah. What else? Um, and it's okay if you don't know. I'm, I'm not really, I'm just, I'm just curious. <laughs> I'm not too sure. Understood. That perfect answer. I'm going to show you how you keep the Sabbath day holy. Read what you got. The book of Exodus, chapter 20 and verse 8. Bring it out. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Like you said, read. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it, thou shalt not do any work. Right, so these stories, you see these sources? None of these stores should be open on, on the Sabbath. None of them, because if, if they are open, what are people doing inside of them? They, and working. But God said on that day you aren't to work. Do, do people in your church work on Saturday? No. Okay, good. All praises. Read the book of Nehemiah, chapter 10 and verse 31. Read it out. And if the people of the land bring where or any victuals on the Sabbath day to sell. So if these stores are open on the Sabbath day to sell things to you. How do you keep the Sabbath day holy with these stores? Read. That we will not buy it of them. What? That we will not buy it of them on the Sabbath. So do y'all go out to eat on Saturday? Good. Okay, all praise. So so y'all have some, some wisdom, some understanding, right? And let me ask you this. 
Is it acceptable in your church for people throughout the day to dress how you dress this? Is that acceptable in your, in your church? Yeah. If that, is that acceptable with God? Um, I mean, so pretty much you said a lot. Yeah, I guess. I'm okay. Yes. You said a lot. If you yes. said Christ, you said Christ color first. doesn't matter. It right? doesn't matter. Say, how old are you, sister? You don't mind me asking. I'm 16. 16. So you're someone's daughter. You're someone's young daughter, right? Let me show you something. Let me show you what you're supposed to be being taught in your church. This is in the New Testament, right? New Testament, read it. The book of 1 Timothy, chapter 2 and verse 9. Read it out. In the like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. The Bible says in the New Testament that women, you are a young woman, should adorn themselves in modest apparel. What is modesty? What does that mean? What does modesty mean? Modesty is defined by every, to, e to each their yeah, own. Gonna, Everyone's standards. Is, that, is, that is not true, sis. That is, that, you know what that is? That's a... That's a... That's American. That's... That's a... Subjective, su uh, subjective, right? That's subjective to your un whatever you believe, however you feel. That's what it is. That's subjective, but that's not true. <laughs> um, modesty is very clearly defined, right? As uh, showing care or covering yourself up. That's what modesty is. Would you agree? Would you agree? Definitely. Absolutely. You, you're an older sister, so you understand, right? This is a young sister. We got we to build her up, sis, right? So read it again. The book of 1 Timothy, chapter 2 and verse 9. In like manner also, that women adorn themselves. They dress themselves or beautify themselves. Right. In modest apparel. Wearing clothes that cover them up. That's right. You're young enough to have somebody right. going out here. And, and your whole body is showing, sis. And God just told you, and they should be telling you in your church, cover up. That's inappropriate. Not just for you, but for, for sis, if she dressing like that. For grandma, if she dressing like that, for any woman that's dressing like that, because what type of attention is going that's going to draw? What she dressing like that, sis? And I'm not picking on you. I just yeah. I want to yeah. get your mind right, right? Mm -hmm. What kind of attention is that going to draw from young boys around here? I don't know. You know, sis. That's, that's, right, I'm asking, I'm and, that's and that's a sin on the man. It's a sin on you this to is, dress like that no, too. No, it's a sin on the man. Right. Keep your eyes to yourself. It's right. a sin on the and, man. And stop giving it's it to him to no, see this. No, Read it again. It's a Read sin it again. on the man. Read it again. To eat the, the book of First Timothy, chapter two and verse nine. It's a commandment for you. So if you don't keep this, it's a sin on the man. Right. And you can't control. And I agree. But you can't control them. You can't control yourself. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.